Uh, this morning, uh, I got something a little, a little different uh, here, here for you in just a moment. Uh, I want us to jump right into the scripture. I think some of you probably noticed we don't have notes. <laughs> I didn't uh, have a bunch of people fussing because they didn't look at the notes on the app. I didn't print any. I have them, uh, but there's a reason uh, for that. Uh, I want to jump into some scripture this morning. We're going to take a look at Second Thessalonians two. Um, and about verses 1 through 6 here in a second, it's going to be a little bit weird for you. I've uh, done something unorthodox. Go ahead. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not me speaking. This is an AI version of my voice. I did not record this. It is reading what I typed into the system after I uploaded a file of what my voice sounds like. I never spoke those words. It took me five minutes sitting at my computer to upload my voice, one minute and 14 seconds of my voice, uh, and then copy into a box this scripture, and could y'all tell that was not me speaking? Sounded, it didn't sound like how I normally, my cadence of reading this stuff, but could you tell it was not my voice? It was not my recording of that. Uh, it was, I, what I spoke was a script and then it recorded this uh, for me. Uh, now, I want you to play just, just a second of it again, Joe. We're not going to listen the, to the whole thing. You don't have to keep the scripture. Concerning okay. the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not, not to become, become easily unsettled or alarmed, or alarmed by, the by the teaching allegedly, allegedly from, us, from us, whether, whether by, by a prophecy or by word of, word of mouth, mouth or by letter, asserting that here? the day of the Lord has Sounds already like it. You can stop it. Um, <clears throat> me and Jim were talking uh, the other day, and um, I'd seen some things over the past couple of years, and we talk a lot about AI uh, and artificial intelligence and things like this. I want to show you a video clip uh, here. I, I referenced this on last week, but I think it bears uh, to show you this. This is a video clip, if it works right, of Anderson Cooper. Uh, uh, and I'm not a big fan of Anderson Cooper, but I like this video clip. Uh, and this is him uh, doing a news story. It's only about a minute, 41 seconds, something like that. Welcome to the whole story. I'm Anderson Cooper. Artificial intelligence Stop or it, Joe, AI is an it. incredibly powerful. This is not just audio. I need to see it. Yeah, probably so. There we go. Roll it back. Okay. That's good like that. Welcome to the whole story. I'm Anderson Cooper. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is an incredibly powerful technology which may change many aspects of our lives. The CEO of Google's parent company, Alphabet, which has invested heavily in it, recently said AI's impact could be more profound than electricity or even fire. But many worry about what that impact might turn out to be. Could AI one day replace humans? And if so, how might that happen? We've already seen some service-based and manufacturing jobs turn to AI in a big way. But what about other industries? Can AI replace journalists or news anchors? Perhaps it already has. Because what you just saw and heard a moment ago was not actually me. This is me, Anderson Cooper. And I am an AI-generated Anderson Cooper. That wasn't my real voice, and I never spoke the words you just heard. We asked a young student in California to create a fully end-to-end -end AI version of me. Looks like me, sounds like me, and it didn't take him very long to do it. This AI version of me was created in just a few weeks, actually, with open source tools. 
And remember, this technology is still in its infancy. It's only going to get better, faster, and more accurate, which raises all sorts of questions. Like, how will we know what's real and what is not? Not just when it comes to believing what you see on TV, but everything from creating art, fighting wars, even waging political campaigns. Hmm. You hear what he said at the end? You can turn those lights on for me. Thank you, Derek. Uh, gonna be kind of, could you tell? I mean, it, I can tell when I really look at it uh, when you look at the voice uh, on there and you, you, and you see. But if they had just showed you just a simple AI version of Anderson Cooper on the TV, nobody's sitting there looking closely at his mouth or, or any of that. And I've seen this some, some weeks ago. That was about a month ago that he did that, uh, did that story. Uh, and this morning, uh, our, our topic is going to be uh, distinguishing between real and deep fake, okay? Uh, because that is what Anderson Cooper just showed you, uh, deep fake. Now, Miriam Webster uh, says uh, that the definition for deep fake uh, is an image or recording that has been convincingly altered and manipulated uh, to misrepresent someone as doing or saying something that was not actually done or said, okay? Uh, now this has been something that has gone on for a very long time. I, I was telling somebody the other day that years ago, uh, I think it was either during COVID, pre or a couple of years before COVID, I do not remember. COVID really uh, stops me from remembering how many things... If I say it was five years ago, I really don't know how to quantify that because COVID was at least 10 years, it feels like. Um, but uh, I, I was able to go on this app and tell it, say, Mary Beth's number. Uh, and, and it called Joshua, my little brother. And it looked, but I did it, it was like his girlfriend's number. And it looked like she was calling him, spoofing, all right, is what that's called. And he answers the phone, but I had typed this stuff into this system that said, hey man, and when he answered, he said, hello, and it said, hey man, what are you calling my girlfriend for? And he's in there washing dishes, and I remember him answering the phone, he's like, who is this? We, he's like, hey, I'll come over there and give you a good whipping, you know, kind of stuff, and he's like, I bet you won't, he's arguing with this computer, you know, uh, over his girlfriend, and I'm dying in there, in the, in the living room, I'm just, I, I was like, dude, it's not real, like, calm down, he was, he was ready to get in his truck, you know, <laughs> go over there and, and defend his honor, you know, or something, but that was years ago, and I was playing around with that thing as a joke, but it hit me, wait a minute. I, I can put that in anybody's number and it come back. It started happening at the bank. We were getting phone calls from people saying, y'all just called us. And we, no, we didn't. Right now, it's very easy for any kid to make it look like you're calling somebody on caller ID. It's not, it comes up on there, Corey's calling you, and then it's not Corey. Okay, and they've been doing that for a long time. Um, I mentioned last week, I think it is, that uh, it's just because you get a Christmas card with my family on there and everything's looking, you know, everybody's smiling, does not mean that that was a true picture that was snapped and taken. Uh, it may mean that Mary Beth Wood uh, got on her computer uh, and took uh, a, a one of Ethan's faces from one of the 70 that she shot and he wasn't looking away and put his head right there on there, and now you got one. Now you got a perfect family photo. I would guarantee you that of the f family photos that you have seen, uh, and I'll just speak for the two of uh, our families, of the sergeants and the Moyers, that just about all of them she doctors in some way. Lighting of it, taking, you know, she, she goes on there. And I don't know about every single photo, but a, a tremendous amount of them. She spends time editing them. I'm not saying she changes the whole thing. I mean, it's us. Uh, but most of the photos that people take today in photography, they just don't snap the picture and print out exactly what they, they took. They go on there. If there's some lighting stuff or something, they change those types of things. So let me ask you, when they do that, even on that small level, is that real? It's not real. It's not what happened. Uh, I remember that uh, going down uh, probably, when did we go to Panama City? Broke six, six years ago or something like that when we went down there with Jim? And then, huh? 
Yeah, so eight, eight years ago or so, we went down to Mexico City Beach, uh, or driving down that way. Uh, Jim and them were staying in Cape San Blas. We were coming back from Panama City, and they were down there, and we said, hey, we're going to stop down there and see this mansion that Jim's family uh, rents every year. Uh, and we went down there, and we were standing on the beach, and we are taking a beach picture. That's all we had was Eli. Um, and uh, took a beautiful picture of the uh, uh, sunset on the beach and all that. And there is this random woman in the background taking a picture of the sunset like this. We're behind her. And we're like, man, this is such a great picture. She wasn't there. So what did Brooke do? She got on the computer, and I had bought her this program, and she got on there and made that lady disappear. So that picture is sitting on our shelf, and I look at it all the time, and I go, there's that lady right there. I know where that lady's at, okay, uh, in, in that picture, because it was just the ocean back there, and it was easy to take that lady out and made it just look like the ocean was still there. That's not a real picture. There was a woman standing there with her phone in the air, okay? And I'll always remember that, even though it's not in that photo. Um, so you say, well, what's, what, what's all this? It's been a long time, folks. People have been lying. Uh, there's been deception. Uh, it's been hard to tell. You, you, you think about the election before, and everybody talks about fake news and how hard it is to uh, figure out whether something's real or not. Uh, it's been for the past several years that when I, I, I trade stocks, for myself personally, not for other people, uh, but I read stories on the companies and articles for the company sometimes to see where they are, and they have been using AI, uh, I know at least for the past couple of years, to write these auto-generated stories, because I'm like, they, nobody has time to write a story every week on every single company about everything that they're doing. And, and I was reading them, it's kind of weird, some of the way it was worded and then I seen at the bottom uh, that they, it, it said that in part this was used, AI was used to, to generate this article. And I went, well, I guess some of the information's okay, but I was really looking for a human to analyze this and tell me whether, you know, buy more shares or you get out of this thing, you know. Uh, but... Uh, it, it, that, that had been going on for quite a, quite a while, and I started wondering. So I started looking to see, are these articles written by human beings as best I could, uh, and, and, and things like that. It's harder and harder to be able to see today whether you can do that. Um, artificial, AI is artificial intelligence, if you weren't understanding the acronym that I was using. Uh, there is a chat GPT. This, uh, Jim's talked about it before. I have a whole sermon in my, in my office that was generated by AI. Uh, Jim called me one day and he said, have you used this chat GPT? I said, no, I haven't used that chat. Uh -uh. I hadn't even gotten on the thing. I said, how did you see it? And he said, he uses B the Bing browser of Microsoft. I don't use that. I use Chrome. And Bing, is, they have an AI thing on there. So he showed his uh, Bible study uh, group on Monday night. Uh, he told it to write an essay, a short essay on Hosea chapter 2 or 3, I can't recall. And it did a phenomenal job in talking about that scripture. So several weeks later, uh, I was doing a sermon on uh, time or something like that. And it wasn't, I didn't tell it to write, obviously, what I was doing because it wouldn't have done, it a good, done a good job. But I got on there and looked and, I said, and seen it. And I put in, I said, write a sermon. He had said an essay. I said, write a sermon over taking it one day at a time, is what I said. It started out like this, and it's in my office. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't know it was going to write it as if I could just stand here and read it, but it did a wonderful job going from the Old Testament, using examples uh, in there. I couldn't find one place to where it aired in its biblical you know, stuff. And I thought, because when Jim first talked about his essay, I said, oh, Jim, he said, oh, that's going to revolutionize. Preachers are going to just use this, and, and they're not going to study anymore. And I said, oh, Jim, it's been for years people have been able to go to the Christian books to buy sermons by Charles Spurgeon and just read his sermons if they want to. But preachers upload their sermons on websites like SermonCentral.com, and plenty of times people could have copied people's sermons. So I didn't think it was that big a deal until I did it, and it spoke it like I would do. And you can train it I could train it to, to say things in the way that I would want to say it. So literally, I could just produce the notes that took 30 seconds as it wrote, you know, up there. And I thought, oh, no, nah, this, is, this is scary. I started to get real, you know, I thought, wow, this is, this is kind of weird that it's, it's doing it this way, speaking like that. So uh, 
again, the, the topic this morning is distinguishing between what is real and what may be a deep fake uh, like you saw with Anderson Cooper. But I want to actually read the scriptures this morning. Uh, I don't like that the AI read it. So let's read it together. Uh, uh, not quite as fast as that did. Uh, in verse 1, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, Concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth, or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way um looking at this verse you see uh that paul is speaking here about this coming of the man of lawlessness uh which is whom the antichrist no the devil's here the Antichrist, all right? Uh, this is talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to come. It's the time of the end of lawlessness in the future. He's warning the people uh, that they shouldn't be deceived, uh, he, he, he says. Uh, do, do, not, do not be deceived uh, by these false teachers uh, that, that are going to come in, um, and, and they're going to be, be teaching that, hey, the day of the Lord's already happened. It says, and pay attention in verse 2, uh, it says, uh, not to, uh, to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching. What's that last part say? Those last three words right there? Allegedly. Allegedly from us. So these false teachers are saying the day of the Lord's already come, and they're trying to take this message and attribute it to the apostles, to Paul and the other apostles, trying to make it sound like this is from them. He said, these people are lying. They're saying this is messages from us. I don't think so. Whether you hear it by prophecy, by word of mouth, whether you see it written down in a letter, it is not so. Paul is saying, watch out for this. He's saying, be careful. Even when somebody's trying to say that it come from a legitimate source, uh, which they were legitimate sources. And, and you see it says, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. And in verse 3, it says, don't let anyone deceive you in what? In any way. Folks, that's getting harder and harder in today's world. And what I just showed you, and with the illustrations that I just gave you, if it didn't give you pause, something's the matter with you. Now, I want you to know, I am, I love technology. I have Alexa in my house. I know, I remember one time somebody was in a Bible study, and they said, do you have Siri in your house? And I was like, oh, yeah. I said, I got Siri and Alexa and the Google Assistant. They like to fill out. Wake up. Yeah. They may be listening to you. Well, I don't really care because I don't really say anything. To, you know, I do probably say something. But, you know, I don't really care. If they were listening in there to me, that's, that's pretty boring. Y'all shut up up there upstairs, kids. You know, something like that, you know. Brooke, make me a sandwich. <laughs> There's no way I'd be that stupid. Uh, you know, go back to the sandwich, it's got poison in it or something. Um, but, but I like technology, I always have. Uh, I don't think that every piece of technology that comes out is nefarious. Technology is neutral. It's, it's not evil, it's not good, you know, it, it's just technology. I know everybody, you, go, you, you get a look, I know when these smartphones come out, somebody else, oh, it's weird. Ken was like, <laughs> now Ken's like, <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't got him on Facebook yet. Him and Debbie are holding out, okay? Uh, the, uh, but, and you, don't, you don't need to do that anyway. But they got smartphones now that they can say, navigate me you know, to Pigeon Forge, navigate me to, you know, to Florida uh, on there. And that's what Ken said. This thing is great with the navigation on there. <laughs> you know, you're like 100 years late, man. We've been, <laughs> Ken and them have been on with the maps, you know, on the, on the dash. And there we go, I think. Um, but... <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> well, you, you were deceived, sir. I'm sorry. Um, the, but technology, te, uh, the technology, though, uh, has always been able to be used for bad purposes. All right. Uh, and, 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 and you always have to account uh, for that kind of stuff. You, we, we found out with Edward Snowden just how much the United States government was listening to us and all that kind of stuff and tracking us and, and these different things. But you give away all kinds of stuff. If you have one of these cell phones and you're opening it with your face, they have your facial likeness. They have your thumbprint in there. You do your banking on there. We do all of that. And guess what? I'm not an off-the-grid person. I'm just going to do it and come what may, I guess. You know, I'm not going to take the mark of the beast. And, I, and guess what? They can't slip the mark of the beast on you. I want you to, don't, don't get, it. listen, the mark of the beast won't happen like this. You'll wake up one day, oh my goodness, it got on me. First of all, you've got to be left here from the rapture. So you'd have a problem. Second of all, you have, to, you have to willingly take it. And you will know that this is the mark of the beast. It won't be, oh, I thought I was just going to get a medical procedure and somehow they implanted the mark of the beast in me. It's a decision, just like anything else with God, for you to reject God, for you to capitulate to it and to do it knowing that you have rejected God. Okay, so I want to dispel any kind of rumor somebody may have had that somehow they're going to get you. You know, it was in that shot. You know, that COVID shot, they, they got it to us. You know, if that's true, I got the mark of the beast because I took the first shot. I think it was a little nuts that I did it, but I did it. And I don't, I don't think I'm sitting here with the mark of the beast now, okay? But you can believe that because people believe crazy stuff. So, uh, I digress from that, uh, thankfully. Here he's talking about not to be deceived. But folks, I'm going to put something to you here. I am going to talk about this a little bit because it... Uh, it the, the, bad about technology. I just told you how much I like it. But I'm not trying to just talk about all technology is evil because we got to live with it. And I like washing machines and refrigerators and all the amenities that we have. Heat yeah, that we have now. But let me put something to you. You say not to be deceived in any way and how difficult that is. Uh, we have been receiving, been inundated the past several weeks. And if y'all are administrators of the Facebook account, maybe y'all have seen the number of Facebook messages I've been receiving recently that says, your page is subject to be taken down. It's been like nine of these things over the course of the couple of weeks. You've put putting content out here that violates Facebook stuff. Click this link to appeal it. And what do I send every time? A thumbs up. I'm not an idiot. This is not coming from Facebook and I'm not clicking your link. Okay. Uh, how many people have looked at their, their uh, financial accounts and you see your bank or somebody telling you, we've been dealing with scams, don't do this, you know. Uh, put it this way, folks, if somebody tells you uh, that, you know, they, they call you and they, they, they want you to go out and, you know, buy a money order for $5,000 um, and, you know, you send them 4500 of it and keep 500 something's wrong with that. Okay, something's wrong with it. I worked in the banking industry, I've been seeing scams for a long time. I told you that it was very hard for us in the banking industry before I left. How did we deal with people? Beverly got a, or let's say Debbie, because she banked where I was at. Debbie got a phone call. It said Capital City Bank. She's seen it. She knows that number. It came from my office number. And so Debbie answers the phone. And let's just say they have done, as I've showed you today, is very possible. They've got it in my voice. And it says, Debbie, wanted you to know you need to come down here to the bank, something, you know, whatever. I've just showed you today that there is, it can happen right now. Take about it a little bit further than that. Say that they spoof my number. They call Brooke. And because you can pay, I pay $20 to have the access to this 1,000 word thing. And there's a, even that company that I use has one you can pay $119 a month for. And you can make it, you can really work with your voice to get it perfect. Okay. And they do voiceovers and things like that. It's used for some good, good means. All right. But let's say that somebody used, they spoofed my telephone number and they called my wife using my voice and said, hey, I, I've, I've had a wreck. I'm over here on Columbus Road. I need you to come here. My wife is going to get in the car with my kids, and she's going to go wherever my voice told her to go to. It can happen right now. How do you determine what is, good, what is real 
and what is fake. How would you determine that? How would I determine that? Debbie Corson called me one time frantically. I've been hit by a train. What? <laughs> I don't know how she was still talking at first, you know, but that right. Oh, okay, it's a car. But I didn't have time to really listen to Debbie and go, I wonder if this is, I didn't never say, Debbie, is this AI? You know, is this a deep fake? I didn't, you told me not to run over there, but I was certainly getting up and ready to come out there to, 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 to uh, bowling broke, you know? You think the scams are bad now to determine whether it's a right link or a right email or, you know, you think it's coming from your bank because they put your bank's logo on the email. It, we are in uncharted waters right now, people, whenever they can take your, they have all this information and all it takes for me, I can do it right now and if you want me to later, I can do it. I can upload, if you left me a voicemail, I have a voicemail on my phone from Ken and Durley both. Durley is always leaving me at least a minute voicemail. I can upload that voicemail right now that I have from Durley into this system and generate her voice to say whatever I want it to be. <laughs> I don't need to record it live. I just need your voice from somewhere in a file to upload it. And I can make it sound like you. I can do it today standing in front of your face if I have my computer right here. And how, and how could you use that? So my point is that, look at this today. How, how do you determine? How are we going to determine between fake and real? When you're looking at Tucker on the, on the news, because, you know, DirecTV cuts you out of 13, so you know you gotta be watching 41 right now. Y'all viewership should have went up a little bit from DirecTV people. Uh, but is it Tucker? Or is, I'm, I don't want you to question all this stuff right now, because I mean, it really is. I'll be going, oh, well, we don't really know, and everybody's panicking. But I'm saying, folks, I was shocked. There was a lady, I was reading a book. There was a lady, and I forget the, the town she was in, uh, but she was a pregnant woman, and uh, facial recognition, it was in the news, but I didn't see it. Facial recognition said that she was a part of an armed robbery. So don't quote me on all the details. I can't really remember, and I didn't bring the article with me. But she was an African-American woman, and they arrested her, based on facial recognition software that said she committed the crime. She was six to eight months pregnant. I can't remember exactly where she was. They arrested her in her house in front of her children, took her to the police station to where she sat on a, a, a concrete bench for hours and hours and hours. And, and she kept, I didn't do this, y'all are nuts. What are you doing? I, I, I didn't do any of this. They didn't even let her go then. They let her out with bail. And it wasn't her. And she is suing the pants off of this city. And she should. I had no idea that we had gone that quick. Usually, you know, I, remember I remember voice recognition back when it was on my old Razor, Motorola Razor. And I would have to say, Brooks Sell. And you had to train it to say it. And then it would recognize your voice. You don't have to do that anymore. So, but it took years for that technology to advance five, six, eight years for that technology to get real good. This stuff has went like this. Bam! To where a kid in California made that AI version of, of Anderson Cooper in no time. To where it took me five minutes. And, that, and the main portion of that was me setting up my account and reading disclosures about what they were going to do with my voice. All right. Now, finishing out this, this verse real quick. Last week I talked to you about are we there yet? And that was more talking about are we at a place where people are going to turn away from sound doctrine and turn aside yet to miss and, and surround themselves with teachers who are going to tell them what their itching ears want to hear. Yeah, we're already there. We've already been there. Well, this is not something tomorrow, this kind of AI stuff, this, this technology, the, the things that people are doing with the scams and whatnot. It is here. It's been happening. And it's, as Anderson Cooper said on there, the technology is still in its infancy, really, because it's only about a year old that has really been out here in the public, where public can use it. And it's only going to get worse of what people can do. It's going to get better in some ways where we can utilize it greatly, but you've got to be careful for the nefarious things that are going to happen. And I want you to look at what the reason I pulled 2 Thessalonians out here, because this verse keeps talking about this, this time down in the future. This, the man of lawlessness, he's coming, he's coming, he's going to come in the end times. And, and you hear that all the time about end times. There's a time coming, there's a time coming. I'm not worried about that right this minute. Look at verse 7. 
There is a time coming where there's going to be a man of lawlessness. You need to be ready for that. But uh, Paul tells the, the church at Thessalonica, for the secret power of lawlessness is what? Already. It's already at work. And this was 2,000 years ago. The secret power of lawlessness, the power, the, the thing the Antichrist is going to be doing, that kind of stuff, that secret power, it is happening even today. The reasons that he's doing the stuff. Now, it's, it's happening. They're, they're, Satan, his plan has never changed. And it's here. Now, it goes on to say, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till it's taken out of the way. Now, who is that? Oh, many a commentary has been written about this. Who is this restrainer, the King James says? Three options that most people put. It's governments. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, or it is God's people collectively, uh, maybe. Uh, I'm just going to give it to you the way I've studied it out. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit. Only one that makes sense. Some people said it was Rome. And yeah, the governments that do make it harder for the men of lawlessness to come because you're going to have a one world government and we have all these national governments and all that stuff, but it goes a lot deeper uh, than that. The Holy Spirit right now is the only thing that is restraining this power and all that stuff. But it says there, there's going to come a time, it says he's taken out of the way. It's not going to be where he's just, at, it's like the verse this morning in Psalms, it's not going to be necessarily and the Holy Spirit's ministry is going to change and God's going to say, enough of the restraining, let go. Holy Spirit's still here. Holy Spirit's not going to leave. The Holy Spirit's still going to be here in the world, but he's not going to restrain the stuff anymore. Can y'all believe we're living in a time of restraint? Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What's it going to be like when his hand is removed like that? And what I want you to understand is we don't have to fret we don't have to worry. Really, if you're a saved, born-again Christian, you do not have to worry about the tribulation time if you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. We're not going to be here. Okay? Uh, so there is no use to necessarily fear monger to you about that. But, the, but what this is saying, we are already in times to where deceptions are occurring, to where we are living in, in, the, uh, uh, in the Gospels. It talks about there's going to be a time of birth pains. We're going to have to experience some bad times right up until uh, the, the rapture of the church, folks. And you've got to be ready. You've got to think about this. I, don't, I can't tell you the end of this lesson today on exactly what you've got to do. I just think that you need to be vigilant, that you need to be aware that there are ways out here that the world is using, and there are a lot of good things, but you need to be careful because there are people sitting in this room and there's more than one of you that I know personally that have been scammed. Some of you scammed by tens of thousands of dollars. And if those people would get up here and give you a testimony of what had happened, they'd tell you, I'm in my sound mind, but these people were good. And they didn't even have this kind of technology. So I can tell you now, you know, you, 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 need, you need to be on alert because it is so hard right now for us to keep up and figure out what is, what is true and what is fake. So let's look at um, uh, uh, Philippians. I want to leave you with, a, hopefully, a little bit of encouragement. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 4 through 9, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Now, that's hard to say once I've just set you up for all of this stuff I just said. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will what? Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay? If you look at what he says in, in the verse, that you're not to be anxious about anything, 
but in all these situations, you're making your request known to God. When you do that, when you are focused on God, when you are dwelling inside of God, when, and, and I didn't tell you all of this stuff for you to go nuts and you to be scared and you to be anxious and you to be worried and, and, and have like PTSD about everything that's going on, because folks, I'm here to tell you, we can't control it. You're not going to be able to get off the grid and stay away from everything. I don't care how much you try. It's over. It's already done. Your information's already there. They can already do it for you. Like I said, you've already left me a voicemail. It's over. You can't hide from it. What you don't do is go hide under a rock, really, and give up and say, oh my gosh, I can't be engaging in this world because it's, it's a terrible world. It's always been. Paul was writing this 2,000 years ago. What you do, and the only hope that we have, is that you abide in Christ Jesus and that you let him fight your battles and that you have your mind trained on him and that you focus on what is true, on what is holy, on what is noble, and you keep your mind as pure as you can. He's going to guard and protect your heart. He's going to guard and protect your mind. And he's going to help you to have a discernment that is about you to when you see something that is fake. Had I played that for y'all today, you would have known at some level Something was weird. If I just tried to do that today and didn't tell you something was coming on, y'all would have Some of you were going, I was drinking water while it was playing, y'all. So surely you didn't know, you didn't think I was up here reading it while I was drinking the water. But there have been some things you, you could have taken up. The only thing I can tell you with today is abide in Christ. There's no amount of books you can read, no self-help stuff, no all this stuff. You're not going to be able to study up on all the technology to be able to figure everything out. You ain't got to do all that. Christ is going to protect us. He promises he's going to protect us through this time. And then when it gets to its worst, you know how he's going to protect us? He's going to pull right out of it. If you're saved, if you're born again, you will not have to be here through the greatest part of the worst time of the tribulation uh, period. Um, but be careful is all I can tell you uh, today. Be careful. Have a little bit of wall up around you about what things are going on and scrutinize things a little bit more than you may have been before. Just, I'm just advocating for you. I'm not advocating for you to be, as I said, paranoid, but I'm advocating you to not be gullible, for you to not be naive and just let, let somebody take advantage of you because they're, they're working hard to do it and they're doing it to the church all the time. I get emails all the time, get Facebook stuff all the time, and I'll, I'll end with this because this is a good thing to tell you. I got an email uh, years ago that said, I've caught you uh, looking at pornographic material on your cell phone, and we have a video of you doing this, and if you don't send $687 and something to our Bitcoin account, we're going to send this video because we've put malware on your cell phone, we're going to send this video to uh, all of your 50 top contacts. <laughs> and I just looked at my phone and I went, <laughs> I know that's not true. And I just let the email go. I didn't bother with it. A couple months later, I got another one. I thought, this is, I was getting it on my phone and my phone has my church email and my regular email and all that together. But I realized they were sending that to my church email. And I went, ooh, what a good scam. Y'all are sending that to preachers. And I looked it up on Google. It was a known scam. And somebody had looked at the trends. Somehow they were able to see whether that Bitcoin account had gotten any kind of deposits. And it had. Ooh. Ooh. Some preacher said, ooh, I done done it. Let me try to do something, you know. And I was going, mm-mm. I, I, I know I didn't do it, number one. And if I had, I'm not paying any ransom. Just a lot of people are fixing to get real sick. But I, I mean, that, I didn't think nothing of it because you get all kinds of emails like that. But when I seen they target in the church, I thought, ooh. And see, they do that. They target Christians. They target pastors. They target the churches because they think we're gullible. They think we're stupid. Don't be. Okay. Don't be. Have your wits about you. Do right. Act right. Don't have an appearance of evil. And you don't have to be looking over your shoulder to figure out, ooh, I wonder if. 
okay, if we're abiding in Christ. Let's pray. Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for the actual reading of your word today. Uh, Father, and I just pray that as we mull these things over uh, in, our, in our hearts and our minds, Lord, it's, it, it, is, it is very difficult for us to see, Lord, just with our own human eyes, how we could possibly tell the difference, Lord, uh, between what is true and what is fake, uh, Lord, uh, in the world with all the different ways, uh, Father, for the, se the deceptions to occur. Not everything, Lord, is, 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 is nefarious. It's not all evil. Uh, but, Lord, it, it certainly is still a blurring of the line between what is true, uh, Father, and what is genuine, what's real. And, Father, I just pray that you would help us, that you would, as the Scriptures say, guard our hearts and guard our minds. Lord, to help us to read your word more, to pray more and commune with you, Father. To uh, That's what in-person church, Father, is so much uh, better, Lord, because we can know we're here, we're seeing it with our own eyes, Lord. We're not looking at it on a video screen where it could possibly have been manipulated, uh, Father God, that uh, all of that person-to-person -person thing will be even more important, Lord, as, as, the, as the blurred lines of visual media, uh, God, is... Uh, uh, is, is, is worsened because of things like this. Uh, so, Father, I just pray that you would help us and protect us, Lord, and, and not try to, uh, Lord, have a spirit of paranoia to take place and to where people are trying to throw off every kind of technology. Lord, we're going to use these things uh, at, for the good purposes, Lord, that we use them for. Uh, but, Lord, just help us to end the circumstances, to have discernment from the Holy Spirit, uh, Lord, and, and for us to have our minds renewed by you. Go with us, Lord, as, you, uh, as, you, as we leave this place today. Keep us safe, Father God. Bring us back, uh, Lord, tomorrow for Jim's Bible study at 6 and for our midweek service, Lord, on Wednesday. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.